Back left wheel could use a new coupling pit. Well, I think it'll hold when we get to halfway house. If you don't get any notions to try your luck. Uh, what do you mean, try my luck? Driving over gopher holes. <laughs> Come on, let's get some breakfast. Luke! Luke, Mr. Garrity wants to see you. You wait for me over at the hotel, here. Yeah? I'll go look in on Zeke. That bad back of his is making him as honorary as a hog caught in a cactus patch. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Garrity. Oh, good morning, Luke. That'll be all, Cooper. The less known about this, the better. Luke, these uh, rumors about Captain Avery coming back to this area have me worried. <laughs> well, the rumors are true. You've got something to be worried about. Well, we have accumulated quite a bit of cash here. And I've decided to do something just in case those rumors become facts. I want to see Captain Avery. Look, Captain Avery. I've got something to tell him. I'm his friend. He's expecting me. He's been piling up cash all week. I figure he's going to transfer some to his bank and outpost. Should be 20, maybe even 25,000 on that coach. That's a nice, tidy sum. Kind of makes it worth my while coming back. Tell me, Cooper, have you heard any talk about uh, my coming back here? Well, there have been some rumors. Rumors? Well, there are going to be more than just rumors the time I finish here. I ain't forgot how they run me off just six months ago. Oh, I ain't forgot. It's time I let them know Captain Avery's back for sure. That stagecoach makes an overnight stop between here and outpost, on it? At halfway house. But it'd be easier for you to stop it when it passes this way. Well, now, you don't think a little old thing like stopping a stagecoach is going to satisfy my boys, do you? Yeah, they're my boys, Cooper, and they'll do anything I tell them. This uniform I wear 
call myself captain. It impresses them, keeps them following me. Of course, when they get a little restless, like they are now, I gotta give them a good fight. Something they can burn, tear apart, before they start collecting scalps. I didn't figure on no massacre. I better get back to town. Now, if you'll just give me my money. What money? You promised me $500 if I'd bring you information. And I heard that Captain Avery, no matter what, is a man of his word. Hmm. I could. Hang on, let me see you. Oh, Cooper. No, Cooper, don't turn around. I guess you also heard that Captain Avery and his raiders, they never take prisoners or leave any witnesses. was a brief two days, I want to thank you, my brothers and sisters, for receiving me with open hearts and good Christian charity. Yea, the devil will now think twice before daring to ferment his evil upon this righteous community. You tell him, Reverend. And don't think I won't, brother. Yea, my children, when my circuit brings me back this way in the very near future, Satan, with all his sinful fire and brimstone, had best beware. But until I do return, I hope that you, the God-fearing people of Timberline, will uphold the sacred thoughts we shared and will carry out my sermons. Morgan? Uh, Luke, do you mind if I talk with you a bit? Davey, you better see about the passengers. Mind if I sit? The coach will be pulling out soon, won't it? Luke, I'd appreciate it if you'd let me go along. I, I haven't got the money for passage, but I'm still good with a gun. Maybe I could ride shotgun to pay my way. Look, Abel, if we needed a shotgun, this trip sign would be along. All we're carrying is passengers and baggage. I, I could spell you on the reins, handle baggage. Anything, Luke, any little thing you want done. Luke, you gotta help me. Abel, I... You and I used to be good friends, real good friends. Don't turn your back on me. You both know how this town feels about me. Sure, they got every right to hate the sight of me. Maybe you feel like they do, but... I can't take it no more, Luke. I got to get away. I got to make a fresh start someplace. Maybe I don't deserve one, but I got to try, Luke. I just got to try. You stay here and drinking's all I've got left. All right. All right, Abel. Five minutes. Coach pulls out in five minutes. This is the coach to outpost, I presume. And where are your manners, boy? Close your mouth. Well, can't you speak? Is this the coach to outpost, or is it not? Oh, yes, sir, outpost. Oh, I'll, I'll get you back. Oh, not so fast. Your hands, boy, are they clean? Yes, sir, I washed them only this morning. Just as I imagined. Filthy. Look, mister, we happen to run the cleanest line west of Chicago, and maybe east of Chicago, too. And I swept in there just this morning, and I dusted, too. Is, uh, is something wrong? Yeah, he says our coach is dirty. The word I used was filthy. Goodbye. Bless you, my people. Bless you. Bless you. You, too, my brothers. Bless you. Look. 
Another passenger for you. Casey Dunlap. He's leaving town on my say-so. Got him off an outpost or out in the middle of the wilderness for all I care. Well, uh, couldn't you hold him for the next stage, Marshal? Seems I got enough problems on board already. I got more than enough problems without this tin horde card sheet hanging around. I'll let some other lawman suffer a little. Oh, I wouldn't argue with him, friend. The Marshal's a very determined man. Hmm. Well, I'm a determined man, too. Just in case you got any ideas about causing trouble on board my stage. Thanks, Luke. I wouldn't much blame you if you skipped this trip. Believe me, I'm tempted to. But with Zeke laid up here and Pop stuck in outpost, someone's got to look after a halfway house. Well, I think Sam Jason's doing a pretty good job of filling in. Yeah, Mr. Jason's all right, I guess. But I guess I should keep an experienced eye on things. Mm. You do that. Abel, you ride up on top with me. David, you ride in the coach. Oh, good move. In the coach. traveling together a spell. My name's Jessup, Reverend Joshua Jessup. I'm Davy Kane, sir. Davy, eh? Short for David? Yes, sir. David's a fine biblical name, fine indeed. Are you a God-fearing boy, David? Well, I, I guess so. But if you don't mind, sir, I, I mean, most folks call me Davy. Can't say I blame the boy much. David does sound a little stiff. My name, sir, happens to be Harkness. David Harkness. I don't blame you for taking offense, friend. <laughs> you sure look like a David to me. I resent your so-called sense of humor, sir. Oh, well, most people do. Where are you from? Boston? Philadelphia? I hardly see where I'm from is any of your concern. Oh, just curious. You know, it's not often that we uh, see something like you out here. <laughs> you can keep your curiosity to yourself. And I warn you, sir, I'll take just so much from you. And how much is just so much? Would you care for a piece of candy, Mr. Dunlap? Hmm? Oh, <laughs> thank you, Davy. Well, it's been a long time since I've had any of this. <laughs> Reverend Jessup? Thank you, my boy. Thank you. Mr. Harkness? Business or pleasure? A whole little combination of both. And you, Reverend, business or pleasure? Well, Brother Dunlap, you might say the business of spreading the word of the Lord gives me a great deal of pleasure. Yes, I can imagine. Well, I saw your posters spread all over Timberline. How was the turnout? Gratifying, most gratifying. Fifty to sixty good souls each night. Not bad for all that amen shouting and hallelujah clapping. <laughs> That's three dollars a head. Yes, sir, Reverend. At your prices, uh, religion seems to be a better business proposition than drawn to an inside straight. <laughs> You're a big fake. Talk like that's blasphemous. Have you no faith? Oh, I have faith. I have all the faith in the world in these. And a nice little friendly no-limit poker game. Tell me, Reverend, how would you like to test your faith against mine? 
Well, for a religious man, you've got a mighty quick temper, Reverend. <laughs> yes, sir, a short-tempered preacher selling repentance for three dollars a head. And a prissy snob named David. <laughs> Davy boy, you better keep that candy handy. This isn't gonna be quite as dull a trip as old Casey figured. <laughs> Remember this, the hand is quicker than the eye. Especially when the hand belongs to a clever card cheat. Whoa! Look, that joke moves in the back wheel. Whoa! 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 Wheel needs fixing. I'm afraid you'll have to get out, gentlemen. What's the matter? Looks like the coupling pin. Didn't stay away from the gopher holes, could you? Well, well, Abel Morgan. I didn't recognize you without your sheriff's badge. Taking a trip, Abel, or did the good citizens run you out of Timberline? I'll leave him alone, Dunlop. You take it up for that? I just said leave him alone. I don't take orders, especially from a coach driver. Well, that's tough, because as long as you're riding on my stage, you take my orders. Now, unless you got some objections, we better settle it right now. When the time comes, you'll know about it. Right now, fixing that wheel is more important. Abel, get some chocks to put under the other wheels. Davey, get the grease bucket and a new coupling pin. Idle hands are the tools of the devil, eh, brother? We're gonna need something here, a block of wood or some rocks or something to brace up this axle. No, gentlemen. I paid for my passage to Outpost, and I have no intention of dirtying my hands or soiling my clothes. Thanks, Mr. Morgan. I'll give these to Luke, and then I'll come back and help you block the wheels. Thanks, Davey. Easy. Well, gentlemen, I see we're finally ready to resume traveling. Uh... You've got more guts than I thought, dude. Now get up and let's find out how much more. Look, Dunlap, I told you don't cause trouble on my stage. And I told you, I'd tell you when the time come, coach driver. There'll be another time, coach driver, and you can take us. You name it. All right, let's get aboard. We've lost enough time already. we got to get a halfway house before dark. <laughs> I guess I didn't do so good, huh, Davey? Guess I should have warned you. Luke's got quick hands, too. Yeah. You know, Mr. Dunlap, you're a funny kind of man. 
It seems to me that you go out of your way just looking for trouble. <laughs> it's a good way to pass time, Davy. Perhaps I should thank you, sir, but I believe I could have handled the situation myself. Maybe so, but I didn't have time to find out. Sir, there's nothing like a good fight to break the monotony of a long trip. But not when it's against the likes of that coach driver. I guess I should have taken you on instead, friend. And possibly you may have even fared worse, friend. Now, David, boy, you keep losing your prissy ways like that, and I might learn to like you. <laughs> yeah, David might even learn to like your driver friend, too. But he's a little fast taking up with the likes of Abel Morgan. Mr. Morgan's all right. Morgan's all right. <laughs> Reverend, Abel Morgan's soul is so far gone. Brother Dunlap, no man's soul is ever gone. Abel Morgan. I heard that name mentioned back in Timberline, but folks seem to shy away from talking about him. You can hardly blame him. Did you ever hear of a Captain Frank Avery? The renegade? Yeah. Avery and his gang terrorized this area some time back. Abel Morgan was sheriff of Timberline at the time. And things got pretty bad, and Morgan organized a citizen posse and led him after Avery. And he led him smack into an ambush. Then he turned tail and rode away in panic. He left those inexperienced men to fend for themselves, left them to be slaughtered like sheep. It was a massacre, a bloodbath. Twelve men rode in, Reverend. One man came back, Mr. Abel Morgan. He used to be a good lawman, Mr. Dunlap. People liked Mr. Morgan. They showed him respect. And then, for one time in his life, he got scared. Yeah, Davy, that one time was enough. Abel Morgan has never paid for what he did. Seems to me he's been paying ever since it happened. And most probably he'll, he'll keep on paying as long as he lives. As long as he remembers. My pa says there's lots of ways a man can get scared. It sometimes happens when he... And he can't help himself when he's got no way of stopping himself from getting scared. My pa says that sometimes you gotta judge a man from beginning to end, and not just for one bad mistake. He says there's something about it in the Bible that sort of explains all that. It's all about who's got the right to judge anyway. Maybe you know what he meant, Reverend. Judge not others, lest ye judge thyself. Yeah. You see, all I was trying to say is that Everybody gets scared once in a while.
How did Jason? Well, is something wrong? I don't know. All of a sudden, I got this uneasy feeling. Nerves, I guess. Yeah. Well, we got through unloading and take the horses over the barn. We'll bed the team down inside for the night. It'll be getting dark soon. You got everything under control? Got it to be expected. All right, Davy. Give Abel a hand with the team in the barn. Take it away, Abel. <laughs> Coffee and food inside, gentlemen. Is there, uh, is there something eating you? I figure Zeke would be riding in with you. It's about time he got back. Well, he's still laid up in Timberline. Well, if he ain't back on the next coach, I'm quitting. Gives me the woolies all alone out here. I only took this job to pick up a little spending money. All right, suit yourself. Uh, you gonna give me a hand with the team? Yeah, I suppose so. You're still paying me. Get in the house. Well, we got on Yitz's team. Do as I say, get in the house. Luke, there's something wrong out there. Start moving for the house. Easy now. at Shiloh and a full regiment at Gettysburg. Good boy, David. You better take this preacher. Those Indians out there might object to paying $3 to have their souls saved. Getting dark soon. Abel, you wanted that second chance? Now they're probably undercover in that clump of trees out there. They're still close enough to take pot shots at us, so stay away from the windows. I might as well tell you, those aren't ordinary Indians. That's Captain Avery. Well, there's no need to panic. He's probably shorthanded. That's why he broke off the first attack. Besides, he can't make those Indians fight after dark. Why'd that stinking renegade make a move on this station? We ain't got nothing he could want. It's not the station Avery came for. That coach is carrying gold or a shipment of cash, right, coach driver? Yeah, right. Considering we're all in this together, I might as well tell you. Somebody tipped our friend Avery off that we're carrying 20,000 in cash to outpost. Then let him ransack the coach and take the cash. Tell him we'll hold our fire. I'd like to. Except it's not on the coach. I got it right here in the money belt. But we could set up a truce of some sorts and give him the money belt. Well, what's the matter with you? You know very well Avery butchers all of his victims. If he's shorthanded like you claim, the money ought to satisfy him. Sure, it'll satisfy Avery, but what about the Indians? He brought him here for a fight. He's got to give it to him. Ah, this John ain't going to settle nothing. Look, if he come here to protect that money in this stinking station, that's his concern. I say we make a deal with Avery and save our hides. He makes sense, Coach Driver. A lot more than you do. Now, listen, you can't... Kiss. Save your breath. Avery, can you hear me out there? I hear you. We know what you're after. Will you talk a deal? Are you a fool? You can't make a deal with a man like Avery. Come on out, we'll talk. All right. If he says he'll take the money and ride away, I'm coming back and take that money belt off of you.
You just stay put, Davy. That was a violent move, friend. Especially for a preacher. I'm no more preacher than you. Just a man trying to save his life. of a feather that Jason's been gone for over an hour. See anything? Stay clear of the window. Cover me. It's Jason. Yeah, what's left of him? Still feel like trying to do business with Avery? What happens now? We wait. We sit and we wait. Until dawn. That's when he'll make his move and that's when we'll get our answer. Let's make a run for it. Oh, that's a good idea. Except you ever try driving a six up in the dark? Besides, they'd ride us down before we knew where they were coming from. We could make a stand, try to beat them off. We've got plenty of ammunition here. Avery's no fool. He won't make another head on attack. I think he'll try to burn us out. Abel, you get some rest. I'll keep watch. bad, doesn't it? I guess you'd feel a lot better if your pop was here to sort of take care of things, huh? No more than I do knowing you're around. I did to your friend, kid. 
I guess the three of us kind of let you down, Davy. You know, uh, I could use a piece of that candy right about now. Thanks. sense in me holding a grudge. I guess it's just like what I was trying to say on the coach. You know, about what man has a right to judge other people. I guess everybody gets scared once in a while. Seems like I've been selling one thing or another all my life. Guess it started out honest enough. Boots, saddles, dry goods, pots and pans, and brushes. Once they even took a crack at ladies' garments. But no matter what I tried, it never worked out right. Just had to fight and scrounge to make a living. So I turned to selling other things. Fake stocks to old widows. Gold mines that never existed. Land you had to go six feet under water to find. Finally, religion. Kind of funny how being in a spot like this gets a man to thinking about what he's done with his life. I took on religion because of the fast and easy money. I wish I'd taken it up on a more serious note. I could use some honest prayers just about now. Yeah, we could use a couple of guardian angels right now, too. You know, when I was a boy, my folks used to tell me, everybody has a guardian angel looking after him. <laughs> well, mine must have took one look at me and went into hiding. Brother Dunlap, hard to picture you ever being a kid. <laughs> and what's your sad story, David boy? Why would anyone leave the niceties in the East to wind up like this? Too much of everything, you might say, and not enough of knowing why. Gentlemen, of a life of luxury can prove to be quite a bore. Especially if it has no aim, no reason. So you, you wake up one morning and decide to find that reason. They say when a man doesn't know which course to take, he usually takes the most difficult one. Light soon. You better get some rest.
My old granddaddy used to have a saying, first punch is worth half the fight. Now that it's light, our only chance is to make a run for it before Avery makes his move. Are you crazy? They pick us off like birds sitting on a fence post. Uh -huh. Well, what do you want to do? Wait till they burn us out? Abel, the coach and the team are still hitched up in front of the barn. Luke, you can make a move toward that barn. They're going to come swarming down on us. You may have your right. I'm going to try to get out the back, work my way close enough to them to rattle them, even for a few minutes. That'll give you people a chance to get to the coach, maybe even get it started rolling. Anyway, it's some kind of a chance. You don't give yourself any chance. First shot you hear, start moving. You three take Davy and get ready to go out that back door. What about you? Well, if that coach driver gets a chance to come back, somebody ought to be out in front to help. Don't look at me like I'm a hero or something. I'll still make a run for that coach, and I intend to do just that. Only takes one man to drive a coach. Let's go, Davy. Come <laughs> on. 
there ought to be some words we could say, Luke. You know, not just the ordinary words that you say over grace, but something special. Something to thank them for what they've done. Fitting words are kind of hard to find, Davy boy. I reckon what we feel inside is more important than just plain words. I keep thinking what Mr. Dunlap said about... I was folks always told him that everybody had a guardian angel to look after him. I guess you and me were lucky, Luke. We had four. Congratulations, my friend. A wise investment. Could be. Let's go pick up the stuff. Wait here. I'll be right back. Uh, wait a minute. If you don't mind, I'd like to walk along with you. My dear friend, just what do you think my function is in this transaction? All I know is I gave you 500 cold cash for your counterfeit bills. Jeez. And I'm not leaving until you make delivery. I don't print the bills myself. And the man who does wishes to remain out of sight. That's how I get my cut, by acting as go-between. So you see, you can't come. Then the deal's off. You're a cautious man, Mr. Ames. I like cautious men. See this animal? A beauty, eh? So? And the saddle. Finest leather. Excellent workmanship. Oh, uh, I'd say the horse and gear are worth 500, wouldn't you? Yeah. Very well, then. I'll simply leave them here as security. It's only a short way from here. I'll go on foot. Still not satisfied? Don't take long. Don't worry, Mr. Ames. I'm a very fast walker. my horse if it's any of your business. Your horse? Well, I don't know what this is all about, but if you care to step inside, you can ask any of the bank's officers. <laughs> it's a nice animal. Nice gear, too. I'd say it's worth at least uh, $500. Well, you'd be closer if you made it a thousand. Now, if you'll excuse me. Divining rod, my boy, divining rod. The divining rod? For the discovery of water, we simply move it over the Earth's surface. And when it comes to a spot containing water, 
It will point down. Saves digging dry wells. Well, how does a stick know where there's water? Carefully selected wood, my boy, found only in the deepest jungles of the Malayan Peninsula. Mighty susceptible to emanations from Aqua Pura. Oh. Oh. <laughs> ah, do I hear the voice of doubt? Believe me, friends, doubt is the root of all error. For doubt and trust come from within. An honest man trusts others. But show me a man with larceny in his heart and I'll show you a sucker, right, boy? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't quite even know what you're talking about, but it sure sounds good. Then go by the sound, boy. Never mind meaning. For intuition is the voice of nature. Well, intellect is the tongue of the serpent, which... Yes, well, I really must be going. See you later, friends. trouble is this time you picked the wrong man but i told you the money's all gone if you just give me a couple of days forget I'll... about the money what have you ever seen anything like this it's gold that's right it's gold but but what, what do you want me to what... the trouble with you carly is you have no ambition you're clever yeah but you've got no ambition i don't know what you're talking about you conned me out of five hundred dollars and now you're going to pay me back with interest you're going to take a whole town. A whole town? That's right. Not this one. People know you here. They know me. This is a ticket on the stage tomorrow morning. You're going west. I am? Uh -huh. And you're going to take this gold nugget as a sample. It's almost as good as that sample bill you showed me, huh? But, well, what do you want me to do? The boys will tell you. They'll also keep you company to make sure you get on that stage tomorrow. Pleasant dreams, Mr. Kalia. Don't you have a knock? Why should I? We'd catch up with Kalia. Plan's all set. He leaves tomorrow. You mean he went along with it? it? Took a little time, but we persuaded him. Well, how much do you think is in it? Ten, twenty thousand. Right now, what difference does that make? And Davy, when the king heard what I had done, he invited me to the palace, and he had a great banquet for me with all sorts of rare delicacies. Honest? <laughs> what do you mean, honest, Davy boy? I, I mean, you know, a king and all, it's kind of hard to believe. On the contrary. It's easy to believe, Davy, if you just put your mind to it. Now, what do you believe? Oh, I, oh, I, I believe you, only I, I never saw a king. Do you believe your eyes? They say seeing is believing, Davy. Yeah, I, I guess so. Very well, then. Look. What's in my hand? Nothing. You see nothing. What is it? An amulet, Davy. Given to me by the Pasha of Turkestan. Carry it with you wherever you go, Davy. It'll protect you from harm. You mean I can keep it? And remember, 
It came from the Pasha of Turkestan. Or it came out of nowhere. Or... Or what? Huh? Oh. Who knows, Davy? There are more things under the sun than are dreamt of in your philosophy. All right, folks, ready to roll. Dave, give me a hand with these bags. lady, but the blankets are thick and the grub is hot. Bar's over there. Help yourself and pay for it later. Hi, nice, nice, Zeke. Baby. Folks, this is Zeke Bonner, your host at Halfway House. Howdy. Baby, give Zeke a hand. I'll get that luggage off the stage. Oh, that son of yours is a fine lad, Mr. Kane. Thank you. Uh, might I have a word with you, sir? I reckon so. Davy, you can handle this too, can't you? Well, if you'd hire a cook, so you could save us both an awful lot of work. Can't find one that cooks as good as I do. Well, I can't cook very well either. Cooking's already done. All you got to do is see it don't burn. All right. Now, what can I do for you, mister? I would like to buy a horse. Aren't you booked through the wild post? Uh, yes, that's right, but it's really a little out of my way, so if you could oblige me. Don't usually have nothing but the stage horses. But it so happens right now, there's a little sorrow. How much? Not mine. Well, whose? Owner's in Denver. I'm keeping it till he gets back. Don't know what he'd say if I sold her. Well, I'm willing to give you twice what she's worth. You're so all fired anxious, you running from the law? Please, Mr. Bonner, not so loud. Uh, no, not the law. Now. If you would just name your price. I'll think about it. Please, Mr. Bonner, I need... What's the matter, Mr. Collier? You don't like our company? Oh, well, no, it's not that. It's just that... Just that you have to have a horse. I know, we heard. But we're hoping you'll change your plans. Well, you fellas don't need me to settle this. I gotta get back to my cooking. You heard the man, Collier. Just to show you we're not fooling. You see, Mr. Ames has big plans for you. He wouldn't like it if you ran out on him. Hey, what's going on here? But this doesn't concern you, driver. When somebody pulls a gun on one of my passengers, it does. It's just a little misunderstanding. It's all over now. What do you say, Mr. Collier? Oh, he, he's right. It's nothing. Nothing at all. All right, but you keep that gun where it belongs, or you're going to be walking. Take it back to your room, Miss Lauren. Thank you very much. What's the truth and what isn't? Well, that's a pretty large order to answer, Davy. I mean, if it's different than what it sounds. How's that? Well, I don't know quite how to explain it, but Mr. Collier can. He says you shouldn't doubt. You gotta believe. Honest men don't doubt. <laughs> well, I like to think that I'm honest, but I sure had a lot of doubts in my time. What about? Well, about a great many things, including your good friend, Mr. Collier. Well, if you've got doubts, what do you do then? You examine the doubts as best you can, make up your mind. It's the basis of all law. Folks, 
hotel's just down the end of the street, owned by Dan Murchison. It also owns the adjoining bar if anyone's interested. There's no question, gentlemen. That strike is worth a quarter of a million at the very least. 250,000 beautiful dollars. And you say the old man who owns it has no idea what it's worth? No idea. How come? Good old spirits of confusion. He doesn't know much of anything. His brain is in a constant state of pickledness. <laughs> and that's why I can assure you, gentlemen, if we show him a pot full of cash, he'll jump at it. So how come you let us in on it? Why don't you grab it up for yourself? Why, well, very simple, my friend. I just don't happen to have the pot full. The old man is befuddled, but he's not crazy. He knows he has a gold mine. He just doesn't know how good it is. Well, what, what do you reckon he'd sell it for? Oh, I'd say somewhere between ten and twenty thousand dollars. Well, that's dirt cheap, gentlemen, to bring in a quarter of a million. Now, I'm putting in a thousand dollars of my own money. I'd go higher if I had it. But I'm sure if enough of you gentlemen go in with me, we can swing the deal. Sounds good to me. Figure I could raise about 500. Excellent. Anyone else? Well, I... Wait a minute. Ah, the ubiquitous Mr. Kane. What is it, Syme? I just wanted you men to know that Carl here and this uh, investor aren't strangers to each other. Well, now, if you mean we met on the stage, quite true. And had dealings together. Uh, but not friendly dealings. Quite the opposite, as you yourself are witness. Nevertheless, you had dealings. If you've got something to say, Syme, why don't you come right out and say it? You think these two men are crooks? No, I don't know. Just wanted you to have the full picture before you started digging down into your mattress and coming up with your life savings. You through, driver? For now. Time? Why don't you hurry? Well, it's getting late. Figured it's about time I was getting home. Forgotten what day of the month this is? No, it's Monday the 17th. So, what does that make last Saturday? 17th, 16th, 15th. Oh, payday. And 20, 30, 42 dollars. That's seven dollars too much. That's for that little side trip you made last week out to old man Fletcher's spread. Well, I didn't expect to get paid extra for that. I know you didn't. That's why you got it. Thanks, Dan. Pleasure. Driver, you're going to have to learn to stop button in where you're not wanted. You're going to get your first lesson right about now. You mind telling me what this is all about? Yeah, I was supposed to learn a lesson. Looks like I'm not a very good pupil. 
Why do you always think with your fists or guns? Trevor was getting out of line. And now he's in line? Well, we got help. If you choose your heads for something besides stopping punches, help wouldn't matter. He was squaring a deal. He was helping the deal. What? Oh, look, why don't you take this up to your room and get a good night's sleep? You look like I could use it. Tomorrow we'll take up where we left off. Wow, the suckers are scared off. They're not scared. They're just cautious. That's just what we want. It sets it up for when Arnie moves in. I don't get it. You don't have to get it. Just do as you're told. Where are you going? I figure Arnie might like to know how things are going. See you tomorrow, boys. undercover. Why, somebody started to get smart? Somebody was bound to, he knew that. Now we can meet it head on, make the deal really look good. We'll have almost everybody in town going for it by the time you show up. What about Kalia? Any trouble with him? No, the boys have got him in line. And besides, there's his professional pride. <laughs> professional witch? He gets a big kick out of seeing just what he can talk people into. You know, I think now that we got him started, he's going to give us a first-rate performance. You better. Gentlemen, please, gentlemen. Last night, Simon Kane as good as called me a thief to my face. Now, those are fighting words. Yet I didn't lift a finger to him. Why? Because he's bigger than you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one reason. But the main reason, he had a point. Now, tell me, am I a crook, a swindler, a cheat, a phony? <laughs> am I? Well, uh, <laughs> how should I know? Aha, uh -huh. how indeed. You don't know me. There's no reason for you to trust me. No reason at all. <laughs> so you see, Mr. Kane was only looking out for your interest, and quite properly. Still, if, now I say if, mind you, if my proposition really is on the level, why, then I'm sure you don't want to turn it down. So what to do? You ask the question, mister, maybe you know the answer. Well, let's say I have a suggestion. Now, as I said before, there's no reason for you to trust me, right? Right. 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 So, let's find someone you can trust. What for? Well, in the first place, to hold the money. Any nominations? Mm -hmm. I can't think of anybody. Well, now, uh, well, uh, uh, how about uh, Dan Murchison? Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Yeah, good. Yeah. As owner of this hotel, I'm sure he's a respected member of your community, and, well, would you consider your money safe with him? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, very well, then. Any of you who wish to invest, just give your money to Dan Murchison. He'll put it in the hotel safe. Then what? Well, when we've raised enough money, I can take it to the owner of the claim and close the deal. Oh, sure. And we never see you again. Oh, right. gentlemen, gentlemen, please. Once again, I don't ask you to trust me. But you're taking our money. But the claim is just a day's journey by horse. I can be accompanied by someone from this town. Once again, someone of your own choosing. Someone beyond suspicion. Now, there's someone who can keep an eye on me. Actually, hold the cash, if you like. And he can examine the claim before we close the deal. And if he isn't satisfied that it's a bargain, he can turn it down and return with your money. Fair enough? I wonder who we should pick. I have a thought. What would you say to Simon Cain? Good mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I remember reading once about a man named Diogenes. Spent all his time walking around with a lantern, looking for an honest man. It's too bad he didn't get this far west. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh. It's very funny. Well, you got to admit he's pretty clever. You try to mess up the deal, and he pulls you into it. It's no joke using me as bait to swindle my friends. Maybe it's not a swindle. Oh, I know a con game when I hear it. You got any proof? But what about that deal the other night, when they jumped me in the alley? Yeah, well, I got to admit, that was no quilting bee. Yo, Collier has to be mixed up in this. That girl's into somehow, too. Sam, let me ask you something. You ever tried to stop a man from betting in a poker game when he thought he could make some easy money? Once. What happened? Lost $200 and hadn't spoke to me since. <laughs> and now you want to stop a whole town? Yes, I don't like the setup. Well, what can happen? Dan's holding the money, he turns it over to you. 
Well, maybe some of Collier's friends plan to rob the safe as soon as it's full enough. Or maybe they're going to jump me on the trail. I don't know. <laughs> no law says you can't take along a little company. Well, they must be prepared for that. Well, whatever they're planning, we can't let them get away with it. All those poor old duffers kicking in their life savings. Yeah, and a lot of young duffers, too. Yeah, I know. You know what gets me? Hmm. In spite of all of it, I still can't help liking that character, Collier. 180, 200, 210, 220, 225, 26, 27, 28. $228. That's all I could raise. It's more than you can afford to lose. I don't figure on losing it. It's a gamble. Why? With you and Syme protecting our money, it's no gamble. It's a sure thing. All right. Charlie Perkins, $228. Figure I'm making two or three thousand dollars. Ought to be enough to buy that branch I've had my eye on. A uh, place of my own. Here's your receipt. Thanks, Mr. Murchison. So long. So long, Charlie. Hi, Sime. Hi, Charlie. Got a customer, Dan? Oh, hello, Sime. Yeah. I sure hope you're wrong about that fellow Collier. Yeah, I do too, but I don't think I am. No, mind, I'm not taking sides, but if it is a swindle, how do you think he plans to work it? I wish I knew. Uh, I've been figuring every angle. Mm, I'll talk to you later, Dan. Mm -hmm. Ah, gentlemen. Just thought I'd come down and see how we're doing. Oh, fine. Even better than fine. Well, then we better get it settled. We've collected enough to make an offer, so if you want me to go with you, you better make it tomorrow. Tomorrow? Luke's making the stage run today. He'll be back tomorrow night. I'm due to go out on Thursday. So if you want to settle this deal. Very well then. Tomorrow it is. Gentlemen, this is a red letter day for Outpost. We're going to buy us a gold mine. Now, would you gentlemen care to join me in a little drink? Thank you. Relax, honey. It's only me. Don't tell me you're suffering from nerves. I just don't like people walking up on me out of the dark. Well, that depends on the person, doesn't it? How can I tell it who is until you're in the light? All cats look alike in the dark. And all women. So I've been told. Yeah. You sure nobody saw you come? Oh, not unless somebody crawled out the hotel window after me. Look, relax, honey. Settle down. Everything's all set. For when? Tomorrow. What time? Any time you want. Just make sure you're there. I'll be there. Mr. Murchison? Yes? I'd like to speak to you. Alone. Over here. Now, what can I do for you? I'm looking for a fellow named Hollis Collier. Found him from Cheyenne. Understand he's staying here. That's right. Why? Well, there's a reward out for him. I aim to collect it. Reward? Yeah. This fellow Collier is a well-known crook, card cheat, and swindler. Good morning, Mr. Murchison. Good morning. Well, I thought we might as well get ready, so if you'll just give me the cash. I thought you were going to wait for Simon. Well, he'll be along in just a moment. Oh, oh, come now, Mr. Murchison. It's perfectly safe. I'll be right here in your presence until Mr. Kane arrives. All right, just a minute.
Isn't that a lovely sight? Hello. There we are. I thank you, sir. Don't mention it. Mr. Kaya. Well, what do you want, sir? I've been waiting a long time for this, and now I've got you. What do you mean? You always got away with it before because there was never any proof. But this time we've got you dead to rights. Got the evidence, and I've got a witness. What does he want? Who is this man? A deputy from Cheyenne. Cheyenne? That's right. Here are my credentials. Mr. Murchison has seen them already. He agreed to cooperate so we could actually catch you in the act. But I, I don't understand. Catch me in what act? Taking money under false pretense. False pretenses? Now, see here. Don't play innocent, mister. You worked the same scheme in Cheyenne. But it was not a scheme. I didn't know the vein would run out. I honestly believed it was a legitimate mine. Is that why you skipped town as soon as you had the money in your pocket? Well, I didn't mean to. I always meant Forget to... it! Explain it all to the judge. What judge? In Cheyenne. But I, I'm not going to Cheyenne. Oh, yes, you are. I'm taking you myself. Turning you over to the marshal. Now, let's go. No, no, wait! This is preposterous! You can't do this to Can me! Can I? Come on. Oh, uh, we'll be needing this for evidence. Hey, wait a minute. That's ours. Don't worry. You'll get it back. He's already signed a receipt for it, but it has to be presented in court. As soon as the trial's over, I'll send it back. Mr. Murchison can return it to you fellas. All right? You got any belongings you want to take with you? Up in my room. Better get them. You won't be coming back this way. Yes, sir. Hey, Josh, what's the excitement? You are right, Mr. Kane. He is a crook. Are you? Yes. Swindle him with a racket. Oh. Dan, what's this I hear about Cardi? The deputy from Cheyenne picked him up. They're upstairs now getting some. What room? Five. Wait a minute, boys. Wait a minute. Take it easy. Come on. Get back. Get back. Take it steady. Simon will handle him, all right. place for him to hide between there and the mountains. I'd have seen him if he was heading for them. All right, we'll try by the river. You fellas take the Timberline Road. Recall your back, boys! We're ready for him! Any luck? Nothing. Well, he's got to be somewhere. You got any suggestions? I wish I had. All I know is we got to get him before that town does. Oh, it was all going so perfect. We had everything right there in the palm of our hands. And the dirty double-crosser. We gotta get him, boys. We gotta get that money back. Make him pay for what he did to Arnie. Well, we'll just keep looking. Come on.
Who's there? I have to talk to you, Davy. Where'd you come from? I didn't see you outside. Oh, I've been having to walk softly, boy. Yeah, I know. Everybody in town's looking for you. They want their money back. Oh, they'll get it. You don't believe me, do you? I want to. But my pop says that everybody's got some doubts. Well, now, you have every reason in the world to doubt me, Davy. But you'll see. This swindle wasn't my idea. I had to go through with it because... <laughs> literally, there was a gun at my head. You still don't believe me, do you? The deputy from Cheyenne told Mr. Mercenson that, that this wasn't the first time he'd done something like this. He's not a deputy boy. He made me work with him, part of the plan. That's how he got the money away from Murchison. Mr. Murchison wouldn't have given him the money unless he was a real deputy. He had papers to show who he was. Sure he did. That man's a killer, Davy boy. He killed a deputy who tried to arrest him once and kept his papers. Figured they'd come in handy sometime. Now, where's your father? He's with the others, looking for you. Well, I have to see him, Davy. Tell him you can find me here. I'll wait. Did you have to shoot that man? What are you talking about? What man? Mr. Ames. Even if he was a killer. If your father comes, ask him to wait. I'll be back. No luck, eh? I've been out all day long. Ain't seen hide in a half. He must have made a clean getaway. Hmm. Well, at least he left me drinking money. And I can sure use it right now. See you later, Mr. Murchison. Lady Sears at the door. I, I had to believe him when he said he'd come back, Pop. And, and I examined all the doubts, too. All right, Davy. So you meant what you told my son. I didn't kill that man, Mr. Kane. And I didn't take that money. I want you to believe that. All right, then give me something to go by. I didn't even know about the murder till Davy told me. That's why I cleared out of here so fast. I had a pretty good idea who did it, but I just wanted to make sure so I could... Hello, Collier. All right, mister, where is it? Where's what? Where's what? You, driver. How much do you know? What's he been telling you? You didn't give him a chance to tell me anything. Maybe, maybe not. For a man who's wanted for robbery and murder, he's pretty cozy here. Could be you made him a deal to hide him out for a price. Have it your way. Considering I've got this, I intend to. Now you start talking. If I start talking, I'll tell you what I think of you. Then you'll pull that trigger and I'll be dead, so I'm not talking. We'll see. Get the kid. Mister, I'll talk. I'll talk just enough to tell you not to hurt my boy, and you can believe that. Now you move like that again, I'm going to blow your head clean off. It goes for you, too. I'm asking again, where's that money? He, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. <laughs> now, you better start talking. Because if you don't, Trask is going to take that kid and he's going to want twist... the money, ask Miss Loring for it. Yes, that's right, gentlemen. Much as I hate to accuse such a charming lady, honesty and 
the welfare of my good friend Davy compel me to speak. What's she doing with it? Most likely waiting for an opportunity to get out of town without being seen. You and her, huh? No, her. I mean she alone. She killed your friend Ames, not I, and took the money. He's just stalling. I don't know. A reason we shouldn't find out. When and how? Well, she was in the room with Ames when I left, and so was the money. Draw your own conclusions, gentlemen. She must have killed him in order to keep it all for herself. So you're just guessing, huh? Or just lying. Well, there's one sure way to find out. Try your persuasive methods on her. Now, why should we believe you? Well, let's say because it's easier to search one room than a whole house. Or to beat information from a woman than from two men and a boy. Time up. All right, you two. Over here. Collier. I'm warning you, if this is a wild goose chase, we're coming back. You don't have to split with him. Did you ever think that we don't have to split with you either? Still in the hall. She's dead. And Collier's gone. So is the money. Gentlemen. What kind of a game are you trying to pull, mister? Well, I just wanted to bring you this. Why? Shall we say, uh, integrity? To thine own self be true. And then it follows as the night the day. Etc., etc., etc. Shakespeare, my boy, a rare philosopher. How about it, Sam? Is it all there? Seems to be. Gentlemen. 
In all my years of double dealing, I have chosen to bilk only the unscrupulous. A sort of poetic justice, one might say. Robbery with a clear conscience? What are you getting at? Getting at? Well, simply that upon this occasion, I was forced against my will to uh, apply my virtuosity upon the good people of your town, as it were. Well, if the good people of this town find you here, they'll apply something to you too, mister, so you better get to the point, quick. I'll be glad to. You see, I swindled Ames out of $500. At the time, I didn't know he was a killer. So I was forced to uh, cooperate in another swindle until the money was paid back. But then I intended to tell you that the credentials were forged and let you take over from there. So while Miss Loring and her gentleman friend were busy congratulating themselves, uh, I bolted through the hotel window. By the time the search was on, I was hiding in a shack near the hotel. This is very good coffee. Oh, now, now, where was I? In a shack near the hotel. Oh, yes. Well, when the coast was clear, I came to find you. But when I found out about the murder, I had to change my plans. You still could have told Sime about it. Sure. And been hanged for murder? <laughs> Thank you, no. You see, I was sure Miss Loring was the killer. But who would believe me if I couldn't prove my story? So I searched her room. And when I found the money was there, then I was able to make my move. Sure, but that doesn't explain why you left for the second time. Suppose the first time I got away, I could have taken the money with me. Would I have returned it? I had to know. And you had to know. That's why I left the second time with the money. And you still could have gotten away. Yes, I know. I had the money, and I got away. And I came back of my own free will. That's not like me. Uh, uh, I'll take that if you don't mind. Yes, I'd be greatly relieved if you would. Hey, Bob, can I go with him? Sure, go ahead. Mr. Kane, it's been a great pleasure meeting you, sir. And I'd also like to say I have only one regret. What's that? Well, it seems possible that I may have turned honest. And if that's true, I wonder what I'll do for a living from now on. Well, you could try working. What a horrible thought.
mẹ đã đang đang nhốt cuốc rồi lại còn đi quẩy tầm này nữa thì mọi người tưởng mình nhiều tiền quá Cháu lúc nào có tiền thì đi đúng không? Chứ nó thì cũng cấm thì em đi đâu Vâng Nó muốn mày đi quá thì ấy Nó muốn đi, không phải nó muốn em đi À nó muốn đi hả? bạn phải nghỉ cả tuần mới đủ để đi chơi được đi làm thì cũng không được nghỉ nhiều lắm nhé nghỉ không lương thì thôi thì cũng nghỉ thôi chứ còn <cười> xem như này nếu như cả nhà yêu thích video của mình thì mọi người ấn like, share và subscribe kênh cho mình nha. Xin chào và hẹn gặp lại cả nhà.